Hi, everybody. Welcome to Still Standing Up. Today, my special guest is Tom Bergeron, or as they say in Canada, Tom Bergeron. And he's our special guest, and uh, we have a lot more, so stay with us. Hi, we're high for Luton High Class here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this uh, podcast. I'm now, sure can, this... we, can we, for yes. the benefit of those who weren't at, at, on the pre show, yes. It was apparently quite a controversy that <laughs> I didn't want to wear the headphones because my theory is Craig is right the hell over there. Why do I need headphones? Well, I need to hear the cues. I don't. Okay, so. You're not hearing right now. They're telling him, tell him to stop. That's what they just said. You know what? That's that's encouraging me to keep going. (laughs) I know that it would. That's the nature of my life. Tom Bergeron, uh, wow, what a career he's had. But we're we're here to talk about still standing up. We are both still standing up. And it's been a while. We were talking earlier about, I'm going to give you the answer. These round things that we had in radio, that we both started in radio with a lot of comments. Don't do that yesterday. Okay, I'm going (laughs) to stop doing the round things like I'm feeling a mannequin's breasts. Yes. So... They're called pots, and they turn up the volume when you're a DJ. Now, DJs then were an actual disc jockey. That's right. That's what I started as, yeah. Exactly. You weren't a radio personnel. You were a disc jockey. I still call them DJs. Now DJs are making a fortune. I know. Club DJs and such. Can you believe that? They're scratching vinyl. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What are you doing to that record? And we didn't call it vinyl either. We just called them records. They just called them records. Exactly. So they're called potentiometers. Never would have got that. Somebody got it, Johnny? No Somebody way. Got Someone it. got it. Who got it? We're on Instagram Live, and someone got that answer. Green-eyed a potential. Green-eyed blonde. Green-eyed blonde. I'm impressed. Slide in my DMs. I have a prize for you. As a right. matter of fact, cool. maybe it'll be one of these. What is that? Uh, we have a beautiful sponsor now, Biotech, and they're incredible. And this, I chose this specifically. I said, which will be the best for me and Tom? What testosterone. Is, is it for your prostate? <laughs> testosterone. <laughs> Close. It helps with your testosterone. It starts to wane. I can't even believe this is a discussion these days, but you, it starts to wane. A, not for you? Last physical I had, my yeah. doctor, who's 20 years younger than yeah. I am, was jealous of my testosterone level. No way. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. whatever the hell you're yeah. t- You don't need I'll, these. No, I'll, I'll take some more. Yeah, There's always your, room for improvement. These are one of your prizes, okay, right, thank for you. being thank here. Tom so Bergeron. Much who started his career a very long time ago, 17 years old, yeah. I believe, right? Yeah. But we're going to hear the good stuff. Okay. We're going to hear the present stuff. We'll hear the in-between. Mm-hmm. But we're also going to talk today about the turnaround. You sure. Heard, that you also were not always at the top of the ladder, not <laughs> always taking my job. Yeah. By the way, you're looking at the runner-up of the host of Hollywood Squares <laughs> and the actual host of Hollywood <laughs> Squares. Then you're looking at the guy who goes at Howard Stern show. The Holly Weird Squares, yeah, and you were the contestant, and I was one of the idiots. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. The squares, unbelievable episode. That, that was crazy. Do you know how people still talk about that episode really? of Howard Stern? Yeah, that want to was... describe it to, to uh, the listeners here, and it really was. Do you remember his face? Like he loved it. He had the oh. monitors set up in the yeah. studio because yeah. he's so devilish. Yeah. Yep. And I flew in thinking I'm a guest, right? I have all these things, you know, yep. you plan your questions. I'm going to have set up this bit and everything. Oh no, they stuck me in another room. <laughs> <laughs> with masking tape, yeah. with my own camera, yeah. and next to me it said Craig Shoemaker. And next to me was Retard Gary. Yeah, this is what it said, by the way. So don't get mad at me for the R right. word. This was yeah, and it said and Crackhead Bob. Yeah, and those 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 are just two of the contestants. Who was I? I who was I playing against? You played who? against another one of the whack yeah. packs, and I lost <laughs> to a whack packer. <laughs> the host of Hollywood Squares playing Holly Weird Squares with Howard you lost, lost to one of the whack packers. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you feel Jeez. your self-esteem just yeah. rises. Oh, yeah. on a, you're oh, supposed yeah. to be the host. I won an the... Emmy for hosting <laughs> Hollywood. Scr- I lost to one of the whack packers. Oh, he was into it too. Oh yeah. And yeah. then I, I tried to give the answers to the guy next to me. And so I just felt so bad. They yeah. would ask him a question. He was going, uh, and I and I go, is that a bad? Look, I'm, I'm I'm doing an impression like I would do. Don Knotts, or I would do an impression of Liam Neeson. Right. Three minutes in, we're canceled, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> No one's going to care about I do Liam Neeson, no, right? That, well, that's true. I have a very special set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a long career. That's no pro- no that's problem right. with right. that. That's See, true. you're like, oh, that's impressive. If yeah. I did anything else yeah, the other than- The thing was <laughs> getting me worried. Other than a white yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get canceled. So, And especially if I'm- It's a whack pack, and I gave him the answer. I would write it down. He goes, I can't read! <laughs> oh, boy. That was- <laughs> But it was one of his- it was one of his infamous episodes. People still yeah, look it up yeah. online. It's it's 1999 that was. You know, Baba Booey uh, yeah. lived in my neighborhood for yeah. for years. Gary, what neighborhood? Uh, uh, in in Connecticut. Oh, yeah. yeah. He commuted all that way. Yeah, 
Yeah. Well, yeah, you're a Connecticut guy. You're yeah. bi-coastal, literally. Yes. Are Not you still? that there's anything wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was. It, yeah. It's diversity. No, I am. Yeah. yeah. So, and you've been married since 1982, 82, right, to Lois? Same wow, person. That's, yeah. that's, in, that's incredible. Yeah. Well, let's start with one of the things that just you know rose up to me was you interviewed two of the three students. Yeah. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, uh, some of those interviews became part of a 90-minute special with Howard. Uh, the the Stooges lost and found. Uh, because, Howard Stern. Yeah, because really? here, I'll give you that part of it, and then I'll go back to. You're a big Stooges freak, first yeah, of all, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I I was promoting a book uh, on Howard's show. Yeah. Back in 2009, and in the book I had written about the experience of tracking down and talking to Mo and Larry. Wow. And Howard's a big Stooges fan. He goes, "Where are those tapes?" I said, oh, "You know, I don't know where they." He goes, you got to find those yeah, tapes. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. So, And this is when they were really old. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, Larry was at the motion picture television campus in Woodland Hills, which I do a lot of uh, fundraising for. That's now. where Larry yeah. Fine ended yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Howard kind of was the impetus for me to look for these tapes, and I found a half hour. With, this is like quarter-inch tape that yeah. I had put in the basement. Found a half hour of my talking with Mo and about 20 minutes with Larry. Brought them in. We transferred them to digital at uh, Howard Studios, and they, with some of the bits they've done over the years yeah. about the Stooges, turned it into a ninety-minute special, which I think is still available on Sirius. Oh, that's yeah. awesome! Yeah. So a special where they're playing the Stooges and things and like then, that. And then you hear so wasn't, si- then was, you hear sixteen-year-old me <laughs> talking to Mo and Larry. Sixteen. Yeah. So you already were driven. In yeah. that kind of yeah. a way, like, yeah. I am going to find them, and, yeah. I'm, and because we were, I mean, when we were kids, that was the that's that what was you did. It. That's yeah, what you that did. You it. watched the Stooges, which were shorts too. They weren't mm-hmm. even like mm-hmm. complete like episodes. Twenty minutes, I think even shorter. Maybe I'm, I'm pretty yeah, sure about maybe. that. What was your favorite episode? I'm I'm going to make a guess. All right, t- close your eyes. All right, and I'm gonna I'm gonna mime to the camera. All right, go. Go. Favorite uh, episode yeah, made right. you laugh the most. Oh, jeez. Uh, the, the one I love the most is the one where Curly had a cameo. It wasn't the funniest, but after Curly had a heart attack and got a, and then Shemp came in. Right. Right. Yeah. Shemp, who had been the original third stew right. in vaudeville. And uh, then the, then what's his name? Took him away. Yeah. You know, he went, went he went to do the Joe Palooka series. And, and so uh, Jerry Howard became the third, uh, Curly. Mm-hmm. But in 52 uh, curly and you could tell the last few shorts that curly did there were health issues he wasn't quite as manic as he had been or funny as he had been but he did a cameo and i think it was hold that lion uh-huh. was the name of the short okay and they're on a train mo and larry and shemp and there's this guy <laughs> sitting down with a hat over his face uh-huh. and mo picks the hat up and the guy's sleeping but he's going <laughs> <laughs> I still do that. I do that snore with yeah. my kids. <laughs> do you ever do that with your kids? Uh, when they were little. Now yeah. they, you know, they're, they're in their thirties. <laughs> they would, they would yeah. snore yeah. at you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But the, so anyway, here's how that happened. Here's how the interview happened. Saturday night. Yeah. I'm home alone in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Yeah. Right? My childhood home. Parents are out. Sisters at a sleepover. I have no social life, so I'm thinking, I knew that two of the three Stooges, the originals, were still alive. Yeah. So with no thought of my parents' long-distance phone bill, (laughs) I called information in uh, California and said, do you have a listing for a Mo Howard or a Larry Fine? What? Yeah. That's. And she she goes, well, we have a few M. Howards. I've got one Larry Fine. She gives me the number. I call. This woman answers who says, oh, oh, you know, we get these calls every so often. That's my son's name, but he's not the Larry Fine you're looking for, but we know where he is. Oh! He's at the Motion Picture because Television Campus. She gave me the number because, you know, they had dealt with this before. Of course. I call there, guy on the switchboard. Do you, by the way, do you lower your voice so they don't know that you're I 16 was so and just hit puberty a, a year yeah, before? Yeah, my voice kind of, I think it was lowered. If, when, if you hear the special, yeah. I sound older then than now. <laughs> Come on. No, seriously. Seriously. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, so Were the you guy, pretending to be old so you had no, some credibility? No, it, it was probably nerves. Was it, or you're an old soul. Maybe I'm, not, it's one I'm of an those old things. soul. <laughs> but I think just the anxiety I was feeling because I was getting close, right? 
So the guy goes, oh, I'll go get him. And then he comes back and he says, you know, Larry's playing poker. He's got a good hand. Can you call in a half an hour? <laughs> so I did. And a half hour later, Larry of the Three Stooges comes on the phone. Now, he was recovering from a stroke, so yeah. there was a little bit of that. Sure. But still very distinctly yeah. Larry. Uh -huh. And once, I think we were talking for about five or ten minutes, he was so warm and welcoming yeah. that out of the blue, he says, you want Moe's number? <laughs> and he gives me Moe's home phone number. Wow. So I'm thinking, I hope my parents don't come <laughs> home. <laughs> so after I say goodnight to him, and I'll talk to you some other time, that'd be nice. I call Moe's house. Moe's wife answers, puts Mo on the phone. Mo starts with, and Mo, by the way, sounds just like he walked off a soundstage. Mm -hmm. Who gave you this number? <laughs> Larry did. <laughs> and my memory of that next moment was just Larry. <laughs> and, wow. and we talked, and over the next 18 months, I probably talked to each of them half a dozen times. On the phone. Yeah, on the phone. As a matter of fact, I was... Uh, they, you, you became their friend, their confidant. Kind of. Their, their entree back in the show business, because they were retired for many yeah, years before yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. There was one night I was uh, president of some club in high school, and we were having a fundraiser, a Three Stooges festival. So the high school auditorium was full. We were playing Stooges shorts, and I thought, I should call Mo. He could maybe address the audience. So I run to the principal's office with my ever-present tape recorder, mm -hmm. call him. By this point, when I, hi, it's Tom from, uh, oh, hi, hi. I got this thing, would you mind? And so he gives this lovely address I go back into the auditorium. We stop the movie. I get booed as I'm <laughs> going on stage. I said, shut the F up. You're going to love this. Yeah, and I have some I valuable. Play yeah. Mo addressing them. Oh. Place went crazy. So cheers for oh, booze yeah. and cheers oh, yeah. instantly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where's the part where you met him and did... A, Never met them in person. You didn't do no. a video interview? No, no. You didn't have the money no. to come out here to Los no, Angeles. No, Are you kidding? Where was Mo I, at the I time, I was working the off the long-distance phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a paper route. Yeah, that's right. Paper, get your paper. Yeah. Did yeah. you do a paper route, by the way? Uh, briefly. I was horrible We all, we all did. It. Yeah. Everyone was horrible. They would duck mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And it was for a weekly paper. It wasn't like the daily paper. Same here, yeah. And you'd have to drop uh, papers at businesses. Yeah. And and I, I thought the point was to get rid of the papers, but the point was really to distribute them evenly. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I didn't last very long at that. Yeah, and then when it was in clement weather, you had to put them in uh, – Bread bags. Yeah. So you had to go collect bread bags. They were like of, paper condoms. And, and it was, it was, it was <laughs> exactly. They, they, were, they were protected. Yeah. But I would knock on the door and I'd see them behind the couch ducking me. I'm, I'm like yelling in, I can see you. It's yeah. 50 cents. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It, 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 that was the worst job. I don't even know how anyone does it. They, they have a whole new technique of doing it. Of course, there's hardly any. Was that your anymore. ultimate worst job? Oh God, no! Yeah, me neither. Oh, me that neither. was that was a breeze compared yeah. to some. I mean, I literally, I literally, uh, my dad would one of uh, my dad left when I was born, but mm -hmm. I would go back mm -hmm. and like try to get to at know at that him. moment. Yeah, something yeah, I said yeah. like, <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. God, no, he really he was he was gone right away. You want to cut the umbilical cord, sir? No, I just want to cut out. <laughs> I'm going to use that. That's okay, good. that's, that's good. all right. I'm doing a okay. Come up with taglines in my act <laughs> over here. Yeah, so I would try to bond with him by doing different jobs that he would have. He was an entrepreneur, right. which is a French word for scam artist. Yeah, there you he go. He would come up with another one and yeah. another one and another one. And this one was, the phase that was one of the worst, was converting cesspools to sewers. So you were the son of Ralph Cramden. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Norton! Norton! I got a one. This one's going to win. Cesspools to sewers, Norton. <laughs> it's the coming thing. Yeah. <laughs> And, of course, I, Norton worked in the sewers. Exactly. Right. He did. Yeah. Well, I was a sewer worker. Yeah. I, uh, I had to, My dad would give me a, uh, a, a shovel that he sawed off, like a sawed-off shotgun. Yeah. And I would go underneath of these homes and dig like a mole, uh -uh. like Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, yeah. In 1966, I ended <laughs> the frame. Let Shawshank try to bond with his daddy. Very good. Wearing nothing but a set of mother crew, pr mother prison clothes and a rock hammer and it <laughs> on down to the nub. And it and Craig, she like, wow, yeah. wow. I had, and he would wait for me at the at the other end, 
so I could connect the sewer to the cesspool Ooh. and build. And, you know, talk about Ooh. a shit job. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. This has gone by so fast. That was just a little bit of a just a little bit of a bit. Yeah. And I'm exhausted yeah. already. I, I, I am. I, am I, I think too. I need some free testosterone. <laughs> there, you might want to chug the bottle. <laughs> it is free, by the way. Oh, is that right? For you. Yeah. Here okay, you go. Thank you so much.